Dia is the very first in a brand new generation of AI browsers. It promises to completely revolutionize how you use the internet by adding AI to every part of your browsing experience. It's currently in a private beta, but I finally got access. And in this video, I'm going to install it for the very first time. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works. This is going to be a lot of fun. So let's jump right in. All right. So I have Dia installed here. And essentially, if you want to get access, you just go to diabrowser.com, sign up for the wait list. Took me a few days to get in. Will probably take you a few days as well. But once you're in, you're going to be able to download it. Um, it's only Mac right now, which is why I'm using my MacBook, but eventually they are going to use do Windows, Linux, etc. So if you have a MacBook, join it, give it a shot uh, and, and see what you like. So I've downloaded it. Let's go through some examples here. There's some examples on their website I want to try out. Now, the first thing you're going to be able to do is personalize it. So you can see this personalize button in the top right. If I click that, it gives me the ability to add um, what inspires me. So my kind of taste, people, brands, products, et cetera. Uh, give some information on yourself, on your learning style, on your writing style, and your code preferences. So if you wanted to help you write and also write code, as well as learn a little bit about you to give you better data while you're browsing, it will be able to do that. So pretty cool stuff. I'm going to keep it off personalized for now. Uh, eventually, I will try that. But for now, I just want to give the base version here. So first thing I've done is just opened it up. So these are it's, it's basically like Chrome or any other browser. You have your tabs. Uh, and then you can start to use your tabs here. So you can ask it questions. So you can see here, I started by just asking um, this page I'm on, what is this page about? And I got an AI answer here. This page introduces Dia, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I can ask it another question here. Uh, would Dia be useful for me as a web developer? And you can see that, uh, yes, Dia could be useful for you as a uh, very useful for you as a web developer, probably a little biased there. Uh, here's how Dia can help web developers and it'll help you through this, this whole process and just help you with the AI. So again, they give some really cool examples here. I pulled up a PDF. Uh, this is actually a PDF on the dangers of large language models. Uh, it's, it's a pretty interesting um, study that came out a few years ago. And I started to ask it some questions here. So the first question I asked it is, what is this document all about? And it gave us a pretty good answer here. This document critically examines the risks and harms of building ever larger language models in AI, gives some of the themes of the article and the purpose of the article. So then I asked, what evidence does it show for its thesis? Document provides empirical evidence, case studies, and literature reviews to support its thesis about the risks of large language models, right? And it starts to get into some of the evidence, uh, training data, et cetera, here. So this is a very large PDF. Um, you know, this is a lot of reading here. So if I wanted uh, AI to help me summarize this, this is a great way to do it, right? I can have my browser essentially work with me. And, and I just think the idea of having AI with you during your browsing of the internet is very, very cool and can definitely save you a ton and ton of time. Um, and I think it's actually going to put a few of these um, other companies out of business once this gets widespread. Uh, I think Chrome will obviously eventually add something like this to their browsing since they have such a huge you know, market share right now. But I also think, um, you know, companies like that read PDFs, there's PDF readers that use AI to read PDFs, things like that, to summarize YouTube videos, etc. A lot of those are going to go by the wayside as people just adopt tools like this. So let's try a, f a few other examples here. So let's do the uh, convince me not to buy this. So let's go shopping a little bit here. Now, I was thinking about buying a new smoker, I actually did buy a smoker. But uh, Let's say that I'm still in the market for a smoker. Let's go to Pellet Smoker Grills. And let's look at a Traeger. These are the big ones here. Let's check this one out here. So let's go ahead and ask it to convince me not to buy this. Convince me not to buy this grill. Let's see what it says. <laughs> sure, here are some reasons why you might want to reconsider buying this. I already bought this, by the way, but it's funny to hear why I shouldn't buy this now. At $1,149, this is a significant investment. There are many other grills uh, that cost much less and still deliver excellent results. Uh, they have ongoing costs, require a steady supply of wood pellets, which can add up over time. Complexity and technology is packed with features. Um, while these can be convenient, they can also introduce more things that can break or malfunction. Uh, maintenance and cleaning, uh, including this one require regular cleaning, uh, size and weight. It's a big grill, 175 pounds. Potential health concerns. Ooh, I didn't know about this. Potential uh, health concerns, chemicals like disinonyl phthalate and carbon monoxide 
Uh, while these are common warnings for grills, it, it is to consider your health consciousness. Okay. So uh, again, I did already buy this, but it is funny to, to see it try to convince me not to buy it. Uh, maybe if I would have read this, I wouldn't have bought it. So uh, probably good that I didn't read this, or maybe maybe not good that I didn't read this, not sure yet, but, um, but that's pretty cool. That's kind of interesting. So again, just having AI with you during your browsing experience, really, really cool. Now let's come to our emails here, um, and let's have this write an email for us here. So, um, Let's come over here and let's write an email to a fake person here. So let's write this email to Toby McGuire at Hollywood.com. And we're going to say, Dear Spider Man. Okay. Now I want to write an email to Spider Man and I want him to uh, consider my email here. So I'm going to say, Help me write an email to Toby McGuire. I don't even know how to spell Toby McGuire. I'm just going to wing it. Toby McGuire and explain why Spider-Man needs to have another movie and why he was the best Spider-Man ever. Okay. So let's see what it does for me here. Here we go. Why the world needs another Spider-Man movie. <laughs> Dear Toby, I hope this message finds you well. As a lifelong fan of your work and especially your unforgettable portrayal of Spider-Man, I wanted to reach out and share why I and so many others believe it's time for another Spider-Man movie with you in the lead. Your performance brought a unique depth of authenticity to Peter Parker that has yet to be matched. I actually kind of agree with this. I don't think uh, that I wouldn't write this email, obviously, to Toby. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of fan email, but it is kind of funny to see. And um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty interesting. So I'm gonna say, um, this is too gushy. Just make it a simple email explaining why he really needs to make another Spider-Man movie. Let's see if it can summarize this a little bit better for me. Hey, Toby, another Spider-Man movie is needed. Hi, Toby, I wanted to reach out and say that another Spider-Man movie with you in, in the lead just makes sense. Your version of Peter Parker connected with audiences in a way that hasn't been matched. There's still a lot of interest in this. So if I wanted to add this to my email body here, I'm just going to click right here and then I'm going to hit insert. So wherever your cursor is set is where you're going to be able to insert this. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that and boom, it already inserted this for me. Um, it, it added the, the, my tag twice. So that will delete and then put the subject here. So obviously I need to move that. Um, so few kinks to be worked out here, obviously, but not bad, right? And definitely something uh, that can help us out. Now, Gmail already has this built in. They have um, functionality to help you write emails, which is kind of cool. But I do like the idea that I can come in here and say, like, help me write an email to Toby McGuire and explain, you know, it gives a little bit more context. Um, and it could also read other emails in my inbox and help me with the context there. So pretty cool stuff. Let's come back and find some other examples here. So... So what you can also do is combine some tabs here, right? So we can combine a few tabs. So let's combine this tab. Let's find another uh, study on the dangers of AI. It's actually interesting. Threats to human health, okay? So let's take these two and let's combine these, okay? So let's add another tab here. So you can see I just clicked plus here. So let's add the other tab. So we now have two tabs in this reference here. So we're referencing two tabs here for this question. And I'm going to say, give me a summary using the data in these two tabs of why AI poses a serious danger to humans. Let's see what it says. So it's saying drawing from both medical, um, from the both medical public health perspective, right, from this, this, this article here, and also the critical research perspective, the stochastic parrots PDF, here's a summary of why AI poses serious dangers to humans. Manipulation control, surveillance, right? So it's taking multiple PDFs um, and it's providing data from both of them, which is really, really cool stuff. Uh, so it can take, you know, I can take all of the PDFs I have here, right? And I, or all of the tabs, I mean, that I have here, I can add them here and I could start to, to actually use them uh, with AI, right? So no more copy pasting, chat GPT, things like that. I can just take the tabs I have open and start to reference them um, for information with AI. So really, really cool. 
Uh, so let's see here. So let's find some more examples. So explain this to me like I'm five. That's pretty interesting. Ooh, I like this compare one, compare Tuscan Villas. Okay, so let's do that. I actually really like that compare one. So let's go to Google and let's go to uh, Google Hotels and let's do a quick search here for some hotels. So let's say I wanna go to, let's say I wanna go to Key West, Key West Hotels. And let's say I wanna go in August and I wanna go for one week to Key West. Pretty hot time to go to Key West. Uh, let's expand this, under 200 is not gonna get us anything decent. Let's bring this all the way up to 800 plus. And let's go ahead and come back here and let's say, let's see here, let's say it's gonna be for two people and let's say four or five stars. So make these some pretty decent hotels. Now let's say, compare these options and let me know and give me, let's see, compare these options and give me a breakdown of the hotels. So let's see what it does for us here. So obviously we can see a lot of the information here, but let's see what it does. So it breaks it down by rate, by reviews, by star rating, by key amenities, and by notable deals. So this is kind of interesting. So we can see that this is 27% less than usual. It's a four-star hotel. So if I, if I just move this over a little bit, we'll get a slightly better view here. So this is pretty cool. So 26% less than usual, the southernmost beach resort. This one actually looks like a pretty good deal. $247 a, month, uh, a night. It's actually not bad at all. Um, Free Wi-Fi, parking outdoors, there's a pool, hot tub, fitness spa, all this good stuff. So this is pretty cool. So I, it's, it's gonna break down everything I see here and give me a pretty cool breakdown. So that's cool for hotels. Let's try this for flights. Let's go back, Google Flights. Let's try this with flights. Let's say I'm gonna go from Miami to, let's say I'm gonna go to Juneau, Alaska. That's a place, right? I spelled that wrong, but it is a place. And let's say we're going for that same week. We're going to Juneau. So let's actually finish that search. And so we have a bunch of flights here. So I'm gonna say, please break down these results and let me know which is the best flight for the money. Let's see what it does. The best value flight is Delta's $568 round trip from Fort Lauderdale to Juneau with two stops. So other considerations are fastest, lowest emissions. So I'm gonna say, give me the fastest flight that's also the best price. Let's see what it says. Fastest flight at the best price is the Alaska Hawaiian 10 hour flight with a $657 round trip with one stop in Seattle. Which, let's see. So I guess that would be this one, this one right here. Nice. So this could definitely save you time. Uh, if, you, if you're coming and doing a, a ton of research, you just wanna do a flight search and just say, hey, what's the cheapest, fastest flight I can find? Boom, gives you that information, find it right here, move on with your life, right? Book the flight and keep going. All right, so let's try something different, actually. I wanna actually try, so I'm on Reddit and I just did a quick search for AI. So I wanted to give me a summary of what the latest feelings about AI are just from doing a Reddit search on AI. So I'm gonna say, analyze the results of this search and let me know if the common, if there is more negativity or positive results about AI. Okay, about AI, I think that makes sense. So analyze these results of the search and let me know if there's more negativity or positive results about AI. There is more negativity than positivity about AI in these Reddit search results. AI is not art, a anyone else freaking out of AI, an idiot, a video to warn about AI, I didn't use AI, but it came back. So it's very negative actually. Um, there's, it's mostly negative here and only a few positive uh, ones here. So summary, while there's a few positive or neutral posts, the majority of the top results here express concern, frustration, or negativity about AI. So that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, pretty pretty cool that it, that it um, was able to actually just read these search results and then tell me what is the 
overwhelming uh, opinion about AI currently from these results. So actually really, really interesting there. All right, so let's try some coding stuff. I, I don't really do coding in my browser. I don't really know who does coding in their browser, to be honest. Mostly you use like a VS code or cursor or something for coding. But let's try some stuff out here. So let's say, fill out the HTML, CSS, and JS areas of this site with a functioning version of checkers that I can run. Let's see if it can actually code checkers for me real quick. All right, so it seems like it coded it for me. So let's take the HTML, let's drop it in here. Still some copy paste, but at least I'm not in a different tab. Let's copy the JavaScript. Let's see if this works. All right, let's move this over and it looks like we do have checkers here. Pretty cool. All right, so it might not be working. So it doesn't really seem to work. I don't know what they're using for coding here. It's definitely not Claude. Claude would work immediately for sure. Not sure what they're using for coding here. I wouldn't use this for coding personally. So I'd give this an X on the coding right now. I wouldn't use this for coding, but I think for everything else that I showed you, it's really cool. Let's try one more example here that it's giving us. So write a press release for VS Code in the style of Amazon launches. So. It's taking the style of a different press release that Amazon used, and it's it's asking to write, we're asking it to write a press release for, for this uh, release from VS Code. Let's see what it does here. I'm actually kind of interested to see how this goes. Pretty solid, pretty solid. So I think for writing, for on-site research, uh, and for just basically enhanced browsing. I think this is really, really cool. I'm gonna start trying to adopt this. If I find some other cool use cases, I will definitely follow up and make another video. Uh, if you did like this video, drop a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, and if you wanna see more videos like this, more AI videos, more AI breakthroughs, uh, and just tutorials on how to use AI, definitely subscribe to the channel and like this video as well.